Hey everybody, this is Design and Technology and today I'm revisiting this bouncing ball and paddle coding with Scratch. It was a request by a viewer who wanted me to explain the code. So it's pretty obvious we're going to be using the space bar to control the initial movements of the ball. When we hit the space bar it'll activate and immediately it'll go 15 degrees and forever moving at 10 steps and if it hits an edge it'll bounce. Now what we're going to do is add in another requirement. Um, what we're going to do is if it's going to be touching something specific, for instance a paddle, we're going to have to pick a specific color so that we know what color it's going to react to. Here we're going to draw the paddle as a new sprite and we're going to make it consistent, like solid. We're going to have to put the paddle in the right spot and what you can do is control the actual shape of it outside of the drawing component, like the drawing part of Scratch. Now, this is a little bit of math. You need to make the ball go in the opposite direction. So just like the degrees on a compass, you have to turn it 180 degrees if it touches the paddle. I had to adjust the color so that it was consistent with the paddle and so if the ball touches the paddle it'll bounce in the opposite direction. Now this part of the code talks about controlling the paddle going horizontally, going left with the arrow and right with the other arrow. And the arrows in reference are the keyboard arrows. I just duplicated it because essentially it's doing the same thing but what I'm going to do is change the X and Y coordinates to match the location where I want it to be. Testing it you can see how the two codes change color and you can see how it's moving back and forth and now you can control the ball. Now we're going to place another sprite which will create a new condition for the game. If the ball touches that red line instead of the black paddle then we're going to have to create a new condition which says if and that's under control if and it's going to touch which is under sensing the red bottom, right? Then an event will happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to use broadcast. Broadcast really what it means is that it's going to send a message from another section. So it'll happen only if that condition is met.
Now, regarding the, the third sprite, which is the game over one, what we wanted to do is to show up in the middle of the screen, but you have to hide it. And then afterwards, based on the broadcast, when it receives the message, you want the game to express, you know, they want it wants to complete the, the condition. So it will then show game over. Now this could be applied to a wide variety of different games. It's all based on this is it's just simply put here in this manner. One of the most important things about coding is you have to, and it's very important, you have to debug. So that's problem solving during, you know, your development of the program. So here I discovered that there was a problem where the ball continued to go. So very easily going up to motion, you can stop all actions. Actually it wasn't, it was in control probably, where it would stop all actions once the two conditions are met. And see, this was debugged again, and it was placed in the if and then statement for the last condition. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I explained it to your liking. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below.